I honestly wasn't even aware of it. Uh, how much time I've possessed in my life to express myself in my own art and many other things. I've been a writer, just a writer of my own thoughts since I was 10. I've kept a journal. Just proven to be one of the only solitary good best decisions I've ever made for myself. As far as my future goes, little did I know how much capturing the present will help you in the future because I was unaware of how much the past fades away. Since the future is here and the present is gone. So, let's just grab one of these. November. Oops, sorry, September. 5, 10 a.m. 28th, 2011. Perhaps the hardest of all learning to accept and inform one's separateness in the context of relationship, the theme which reoccurs throughout the discussion is the necessity of taking responsibility for one's own well-being while still being responsive to others. Being honest with myself, admitting to myself there are struggles within myself that need resolution. It's okay to feel exhausted, exasperated, and hopelessly broken down occasionally. Every now and then, from time to time, having moments of weakness, confusion, and chaos at a loss for ideas, complete lack of discretion, doesn't mean I've made no progress or that there's no progress still to be had. Progress, from what I can tell so far, appears almost transparent, non-existent, or invisible during the lowest moments throughout our lifetimes. We can't see it all. We were never meant to. So in theory, we should all just chill out more often and relax. It sounds so easy, but feels so complicated. Crazy square ones are a lot better. So, no date, context when this was written. Last time I wrote it with a lime green pen, I can tell you that it's been a good five years since that's happened. So, why make yourself go blind? You don't have to. Sacrifices. I was always so up and willing to compromise my well being and mental health to prove I cared. Likewise, looking back over these times where I've believed with all my heart that what was being exchanged between myself and another was in fact truly love um, in one form or another it seems so blatantly obvious now my concept of what love means at every stage of my intersection of my evolution is what actually defines my experience of love um, in any given moment And the so-called love itself. What? Whoops, crash out. The best way to explain what I mean by this is to use my relationship I had with a man named Kurt as an example. To this day, this particular relationship, more than any other, has taught me more and more about what life is, honestly means, and how it works. Fortunately, I did so by destroying my entire notion of what it was and that I had regarded it to be prior to dating him. Even though it broke me in ways I could never hope to ever repair, I'm glad it did. How else would I have gone about seeing for myself how much the power of love can manipulate a person to turn their their very own back towards themselves? The heartbreak I believe he had caused me was actually heartbreak I had brought upon myself. I had taken things between him and I at face value and allowed myself to see his actions for what they really were, I wouldn't have had spared myself um, to the degree of intensity I experienced when I finally did uh, once and for all dispose of Unless he finally did once and all dispose of me for good. I see now I broke myself on him. He did not love me, and that was probably always clear from the moment we first met. Hmm. Interesting. Is there anything more reliable? That's about me. 
more about the country. I've got lots of those. Let's see here. Here we go. January 7th, 2013. History in the making. Illinois State Legislature seeking vote on gun ban right now. Your immediate action required. After getting no, after getting nowhere in the Senate, the gun controllers have taken their campaign to destroy your rights to the Illinois House of Representatives, sponsored by rapidly anti-gun representative Eddie something or other, Eddie fuckface probably. Uh, with the amendment, which would do two things to you. Pick your pocket to pay for the confiscation and destruction of your own guns. And it would more than 50% of the rifles and more than 80% of the handguns owned by Illinois citizens render them illegal, both to carry and possess. Now that would have been SB 2899. Why did I care about what's happening in Illinois? Because I'm not an ignorant dumbass like everybody else, and I do recognize that Illinois is in this located in the same fucking country as Washington State and it's just all one big enchilada two different beans from two different ends of the same burrito muchachos alright one more and then I'm out okay. I'm off to do artsy things or nothing at all whatever suits me okay let's see what we got here this is un titled undated but got the word tyranny in it, so I've written it somewhere in the past six years, because I didn't use tyranny as a word in my journals. Tyranny of all forms is closing in around us, or so they would have us fearfully believe. Though this tyranny is um, premeditated, cold, sadistic, and calculative, it is only a monster so long as the people of the villages remain in response to its incremental stages of being rolled out and on our civil liberties and freedoms, and do nothing to band together to slaughter this life-threatening, unholy beast. We, ourselves, excluding those presently and actively engaged in resistance or involved in the charity of political reform, must have very little or no will left in our dead hearts, too afraid to see the truth and look it square in the eyes, and too frightened to take a stand against evil injustice or any crime being committed against humanity, for that matter, a fight and fight for what we believe in. I'm not saying we are all too logic or such ideals of common sense, decency, honor, virtue, moral conviction. It now appears that the most Americans from young to old never learned the basics of our constitution that has granted us a free and sovereign republic until 9-11, not to mention the historical lessons encrypted and embedded in the atrocities leashed upon mankind by the manipulators of the past hundred years. Or, even worse, shamefully and selfishly, we have all allowed our societies and family values to crumble away and dwindle down to oblivion. Nothing at all leaves an urgent warning to be detected by the watchful eye, present mindful and mindful awareness. We have to face these adversaries with fearlessness and defeat brazen, self-sacrificial demonstrations. All I'm saying is that spinelessness, if spinelessness is all we possess, then Americans may as well consider the structure of their once great and young nation to be dead and gone. And now all we are doing as the citizens of this cowardly culture are waiting for is the final stripping of our lingering rights and the initiation of the final agenda in which the full implementation of execution of the surveillance police state in which we no American is free or will be granted the ability or privilege to speak out against this murderous dictatorship. Once we are fully mutated and fully lobotomized into this Borg slave species because we are not collectively exercising any of our rights or taking the control of our own country back into our own hands, we will simply find out how much of an inevitability our common fate then becomes. That will we'll lose such freedoms and means to overthrow this hostile world takeover by this banking cartel known as the Obama administration. That's it, folks. Uh, I don't have fancy drink. I probably don't have a fancy suit anyhow. So really. All I know is I've like, spoken my mind more 
to need any say uh, needs online publicly to at this point to what is the point they have so much quote quote intellectual dirt on me about what I think of them that I might as well just share everything I've got to share right now not for you guys don't flatter yourselves all you people are alive right now none of you guys cared enough to change any of this so I'm just talking to the people maybe a hundred years from now who might find this cell phone somehow kind of preserved in this big gloopy ball of super glue that oozed off all my art and somehow preserved this message for the future in case I'm the next Anne Frank amongst all the millions of Anne Franks being speaking right now in case my words do have some kind of a historical oral value in the future that's all I'm talking about. Right now we're living in the pre-American Holocaust, emotional Holocaust period before the physical Holocaust ensues. And I just wanted to state that I, Andrew Simmons, for the record, I am discontent with the lack of a future existing before any of us. Uh, I'm not really a day-to-day -day person. I don't like to live regimentally, live routinely either, but I don't like to live the basis of my day on a day-to-day -day basis. I like to have my basis determined, set in stone. My basis of my life is to live my life now the best I can in a creation of a future I want to have. And so I guess that moral principle still exists, even if that future is gone. I still am obligated to try my hardest, even when I'm so deeply resentful of all the people who aren't. And the more I try, the more resentful I become, because the more apparent it becomes that what's the point of any of this is, I mean, it literally is, it's all tucked neatly with some corn muffins and a napkin in a basket, ready to go to hell. So I just feel like, um... Uh, yeah. I just feel like a little fish swimming around in a big sea. And I don't know. Uh, I guess the alternative to knowing all this shit, seeing it coming, is to not see it coming. And I've been observing people living that alternative, and that does not seem to suit me either. So maybe we can just destroy this world and get that over with, and maybe then we can just go ahead and start building a new one left from the bits and scraps and uh, why don't we just get this whole destruction process over with so that we can start anew soon because of the waiting for the train to come is it's getting old it blows, it sucks, I'd rather get off the tracks and fucking move on I'm sure a lot of you would too so sorry for my swearing um, I don't feel like I can properly emphasize my opinions without swearing because I know that unless I'm murdering, raping, or mutilating, or swearing, or doing something obscene, none of you guys will give a fuck or pay attention anyways because your brains are so exploited and you guys are just so desensitized to just common, reasonable, eloquent conversation that now I've got, I've got to... Oh yeah, that's right, I'm not talking to you guys, so hell with you, I should be talking in a more children-appropriate type of manner in case... Because this is for the future, I forgot. Our future is <laughs> gone. But who's to say that the continuing of life on this earth might still happen even after?